Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It's Thursday, November 16th, and we are here answering financial questions about you, your lives, your financial lives, anything that all that is going on. We do that by encouraging you to go to our website, jillonmoney.com. When you're there and you've got a question, you click the contact us button. The form pops up. Now, if you just complete the form, we'll get your email. We do email episodes. But if you'd like to join us live, just check the box and Mark does everything else. That is what Kristen did. Kristen is on the line from San Diego, which is such a nice part of California to be from. How are you, Kristen? Are you enjoying your beautiful weather? Oh, yes. I cannot complain when it's uh, 80 degrees in November. Oh, yeah. But you did have that. Yeah, you have scary high temperatures in the summer. You're going to have to you're going to have to do your summers in like Alaska in a few years just to get out (laughs) of there, right? What's going on, Kristen? How can we help you out? Well, I recently changed jobs and I'm in need of some help regarding what to do with my previous employer's accounts um, and They are set up as a 401A, Mm -hmm. a Roth 403B, and a defined benefit account. So the defined benefit, let's just do uh, that. Is that a cash value right now that turns into a pension or, you know, a stream of income later? I believe so. It has um, a value currently of 78,000. And I know from the um, statements that I had received, uh, it said that if I, I guess, keep it in its current state at retirement, it would equal um, a payment of 1,050 per month. When you say at retirement, what do they define as at retirement? It's 65, it's 67, it's 62. What's the age that 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 kicks in? I believe it was 60, 62, somewhere within that range. But I I can't remember 100%, but I believe that was the, the time frame. Great. How much is in the 401A? The 401A has two hundred, um, roughly 234000 Okay. And the Roth 403B? Has 127000 Okay. So a lot of money you saved up. How old are you, Kristen? I'm 51. Okay. Are you married, single, uh, looking? I'm, I'm just kidding about the looking. I don't know. Really- <laughs> Um, it, by status, um, partnered, but live separate, finances separate um, at this point in time. How much are you making in your new job? Um, 128000 Oh, that's great. And does this job have um, a 401k, a 403b? What's the retirement that it offers? It has a um, a 403B, so either a Roth or a traditional. Mm-hmm. That was another question I had. I went ahead and signed up for the Roth, um, and I'm currently contributing 18%. Ooh. And then once I hit six months, I will be able to um, invest in the 401A. I'll put 3% in there. Then they'll match it 3%, and then annually they'll put in an additional 1% of my salary. Wow. That's good. All right. Now, the Roth that you have, the 403B, what company is it run through? Is it like Fidelity or Van? Is it a big company like that? It's through Lincoln. In any of the ones that I currently have, as compared to my new one, there's not a lot of choices. So Mm -hmm. that was... Part of my yeah. question was uh-huh. where can, I got you know, you. do I move it and what do I put it in? Because I got you. I'm just super limited right now. Understood. And what about the defined benefit can just stay there accruing its business? We're not moving that. But let me ask you another question. Do you have like a brokerage account somewhere, like non-retirement money? Um, yes, I had started a Roth previously. I I don't think I'm going to be able to put anything into it mm-hmm. this year um, because of where my pay was for my last job and cashing out PTO when I left in my new position. But I have one through Vanguard. How much is in there now? 8000 And what about money in the bank? Um, I have 115000 in savings. Mm, that's a juicy savings. Are you saving for something? Well, originally, yes, I was saving for um, a house, mm-hmm. but 
Southern California home prices. I, I don't know how reasonable that is. I'm going to keep trying. But okay. um, so I have 105000 in a Barclays online savings account. And then um, the other 10 is just in my credit union account. So of the 115, 105 is in the online high interest and then 10 in savings in a checking. And then I have a 529 um, for my kiddos and there is um, 64,000 uh, remaining in that. My oldest is a sophomore in college and so I'm um, paying for her college and then cash flowing part of her um, off-campus housing, utilities, and all of that. And then I have a junior in high school. Um, and between the two of them is the $64,000. Correct. What do you suspect that you are paying for, you know, above the whole 529? Like what's cash flow wise, what are you putting out there to help her through college? What What amount? I'm still actually putting money into the 529 every month. So I'm still putting like 800 in there. Um, and then it's just that 700 a month outside of that. So you mean you're um, putting, you're, you're basically allocating $1,500 a month for education one way or the other. Correct. Wow, that's a lot. Tell us about where do you live? Do you rent? I rent. What's the rent? Um, 2090 a month. And do you like where you live? I do. I mean, I would love to own at some point, but for now, yes, I'm, I'm good where I live. What price would you have to pay to move into something where you'd want to live? I, you know, I'm not sure because the the market here just keeps going up and up and up. Um, so, you know, ideally, I was trying to hope that something would come eventually. The, the markets change and they come back down to where like I could find something for like under 600, somewhere in the fives, but I just don't know if that's possible. So what would that buy you right now? If you had $600,000, what would it buy you? Um, it, w- it might be able to find like a condo. The problem is then the condo fees on top of that mm. are like another 500. So that's why I was trying to avoid going that, that route. Right. In which case, stay where you are, rent. Correct. Because that helps me put more towards the college for mm-hmm. um, for my daughter and then mm-hmm. continuing to put into the, the amount into retirement. I mean, you're saving a lot of money. How much do you need to live on? When, forgetting about the $1,500 a month for the 529 and the college funding for your daughter, uh, what do you think you need to spend? Um, well, it's roughly 5000 a month, including those two. So wow. if you take those out, um, I lived on a very strict <laughs> budget. Jeez. So I guess so. Like, yeah, thirty thirty five hundred a month. Is that like like so tight? Like, what would you like? Would it? Would you prefer? What do you think you could really? Lo- would you like to live on? Um, I mean, I would love to have a little bit more for like um, vacations and travel, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I also want to retire at a good age. I don't want to have to keep working. So um, that's where I kind of balance it, balance it Mm -hmm. out and justify just keep living by a a strict budget so I can retire hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, What does that mean when you say sooner rather than later? What age? um, Before 65. I don't know if that's how much before. I mean, let's just put this out there. You're 51, 65. What's pick a date in between there? (laughs) I mean, by 62 would be great. I mean, okay. I've been saving. um, I started um, saving all that I have right now. It's been since only about 2008, 2009. So in the last 14 years, I've been able to accumulate what I have. So it's awesome. It's awesome. So, so I'm hoping if I can find the right choices on what to invest it in, that mm-hmm. maybe that will help me grow it um, a little bit more. Probably not. Probably not. Let me just dispel that right now for everyone listening. Probably not. Um, the most important factor as to whether you're going to reach your retirement goal of 62 is how much you save. You know, frankly, you've got a chunk of money that's saved. It's great. Um, You're going to continue to put a lot of money away. Again, this 18% plus the 3% match and then the 1% after that. So there'll be a lot of money going in. I think it's like, it's a maybe. Like 11 years from now, we have to see how, what things look like. 
that $1,000 a month pension is a big deal for you. But, you know, you'll have to, you're going to have to fund a gap between 62 and 67, your retirement, your social security retirement, um, full retirement age. Do you happen to know what your full retirement age social security benefit is estimated at? I do. Um, at 67, it's 3,353. And mm-hmm. at 70, it's 4,211. So you see what I'm saying? This is what's in- interesting to me. Right now, you're in great shape. Everything is good. You'll be fine. We're gonna. You're going to need to fund the gap between 62 and 67 or 62 and 70. You'll be able to do that. Once you hit that, you should be okay. You really should because you're not going to – all that money that's going towards college. Let's see. Your kid is a sophomore uh, – is a junior in high school. So you have a uh, sophomore, junior, senior, and then four more years. So we have seven years. And, um, you know, in seven years, we're going to know a lot more. You'll deplete the 529 plan. You'll have the extra cash flow. I mean, I think you probably can do this. It's just that I want you to be flexible thinking about it. I don't want this to be, oh, my God, it's a concrete plan. There is no such thing as a concrete plan, right? So now let's talk a little bit about the money that you have, okay? So what I would do is I would take the $127,000 that's in the Roth 403B, And I would roll it over to your Roth at Vanguard. And then I would take the 401A and I would roll that into an IRA rollover because that's pre-tax, right? The 401A? Right. So how does that work? So um, does that mean, I know with the Roth, when I go to take it out, I don't pay any taxes on that, correct? Correct. But when you roll it over, you're not, there's no tax event. This is not taxable, even if you do with the pre-tax account. So what happens is the Roth goes to Roth. Okay, so it's a it's what we call uh, like a direct tape to tape transfer. You are not the money never comes to you. You're not getting some big check. It goes from the Roth 403B to the Vanguard Roth account. What the way you'll do this is you will call Vanguard and say, I have one hundred twenty seven thousand dollars in an old Roth 403B. Can you help me roll it there? And when you bring assets into an organization, they are more than happy to help you. Then you're going to say to them, and I have a 401A. It is a pre-tax account. So I need to open an IRA with you, Vanguard, an IRA rollover account. And I need to do a direct transfer into that account of 200, whatever's in the balance of your 401A. And they will essentially help you coordinate getting it out into an account with them. Now, when that happens, a weird thing occurs. Don't freak out. It's very funny. It will come in as cash for a a day or two. You're not going to be invested. It'll come into the new account in cash, and then you'll have to allocate that cash. And you'll you'll create an allocation that probably is not unlike what you have now, like in your 403B, your Roth 403B and your 401A. How are you investing? Um, Well, those, it was hard. It was a little hard um, to tell. In the 401A, there's 20% in a Vanguard balance. It said Mm -hmm. VBAIX. Okay. Yep. And then it had 30% in a T row large equity, 20% in a JPM value advanced. Yep. 25% in a small US equity, Russell, and then 5% in the T row, I guess it's like an international. But again, they're very limited. So that's kind of, so I don't know. Um, my new 403B is through Fidelity through my um, new employer. I thought you said that was Lincoln Financial. That's my old one. But my new oh, employer. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. So the old one is Lincoln Financial and the new one's Fidelity? Correct. Is that the same, the 403B and the 401A are both Fidelity? Um, no. So the for my old job, the 127 in the 403B is through Lincoln. But my uh-huh. new job that I just started, that Roth 403B is through Fidelity. Okay, stop, for, stop full stop. Hold on. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your new plan and you're going to say, I want to roll my old 403B, the $127,000, from Lincoln to Fidelity. They will help you do that. Oh, okay. You're going to go directly from that to that. Where is the old 401A held? It's through something called Alight. 
I have no idea what that means. Where's the new 401a held? I don't know because I don't, I haven't um, qualified for that until six months. So I'm not quite sure. Leave the 401a where it is. When you're open up and ready to do the new 401a, let's just move everything in. I feel like this is going to be easier for you. You already seem overwhelmed with the idea of choosing. So here's what you're going to do. 403b to 403b. Boom, boom. 401a to 401a. Boom, boom. When you are eligible for that 401a, you're going to email us and we're going to help you with the allocation. Okay. But this, the easier thing for you to do is to just use the current plan. If it's fidelity, it's good. It's easy. I'm hopeful that the 401a is also fidelity, but we'll see. And then you will allocate it, you know, like a 51 year old would. You could use like one big US stock market index, one bond market index, one international index, and call it a day, honestly. I don't want you to think that your actual choices are going to make a difference with you hitting your goals. What it will allow you to hit your goals is the ability for you to save, and you are saving a bunch of money. So here's how I see this going you can move these accounts, consolidate them into your current employer. You pick a U.S. stock market index fund for most of the money, probably like half of the money. Then you're going to put some of the money into an international index, maybe 10%. If you wanted to put 5% in a small cap, that's fine. And the rest in a bond market index, that's it. Go to sleep. Don't worry. When you're done with education, that $1,500 a month that's going into the 529 should basically go into a brand new um, supplemental account Either it will be savings or it will be a brokerage account. It's so far off, we don't need to worry about it right now. I would not be looking at buying a home. That, I'll tell you that right now. That's going to be a huge jump in your obligations. And I think while the kids are in college, it's too much for you. And is I it really do. Better to go to a brokerage versus continuing to put it in just savings, especially if the rates go back down. Yeah. I mean, I, I, ideally, but it's going to be seven years from now. So, I mean, I don't know when you're, you know what I mean? Like right. or it's going to be five years from now. So we'll have to see where things stand, but probably, yeah, I would like you to be investing. I mean, everyone listening right now, yeah, your rates are going to go down. This is the tippy top. Okay. We're not going much below. We're not going much above this level. So you should all be thinking about getting your money invested right now, because there's only one way to go as I see it in the future. And that is lower on rates, not higher in terms of your fixed rates for savings and checking and CDs. So if you're all waiting for this magic moment for like no one's ringing a bell and telling you when it's time to get into the market, putting money away like you're doing, Kristen, you're putting money away into retirement. That is what you should be doing. The reason why your emergency reserve is so high right now is because you were thinking about buying a house. If you don't want to do that it, or if you decide that's okay to kind of put that on the back burner, then what I would do is if you think in five years you really do want the chance to buy a house, then you can lock up some of that money and buy a five-year CD or a three-year CD, and you can make sure that money is there for you. But if you're really abandoning the idea of a house, uh, because maybe the partner and you, you will get together, perhaps, I don't know, maybe, and live in the same place, then you know, then you would get it invested. And you just opened an account at Vanguard. Perfect. Okay. How's that? that and and do good. you have do you have um, your estate documents done? No, I know that's a bad. I, I hear you ask it every time, and I keep saying I need to do that, but life just mm. <laughs> something Why? gets in the way. I need to get people. I need to get people on board with this. How am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? Tell me, what can I do to break through to you, Chris? I know it's just bit, you know, single parenthood working. It's just, it's, it, there always just feels like there's something else to do. So mm. it just kind of falls. But is that something where you can do like an online? Because I really don't have much. It, it, I, I feel like it would be. Yeah. So I mean, most of your assets will pass by contract. I'll tell you a little workaround that I would do if I were you. The retirement accounts will pass by contract. Absolutely. Make sure that your savings account, that this money, that this is, that the account is set up as a transfer on death account. It is. You know what that, okay. So that's good. The 529s are good. So all you really need, like the most important thing you need, you can totally do an online version of this. You need a will, but you need a healthcare proxy also. Like if you got hit by a bus, who's going to make the decision? You got two kids. You're probably going to do it, make the sophomore in college do it because she is a age of majority. 
but you should make sure that like there's some document that says where your stuff goes. It's basically between my kids. Is there like a reputable online um, company? I mean, there's what I think that will maker is probably pretty good. And you can try that. You can get a reference from somebody. You can do the will online and then make an appointment with a lawyer and just say, can you review this for me? That's what I would do. You know, it's much easier to do it that way. And you'll be okay. It'll be fine. It really will be. I, I think you'll be happy to have done that. You really will. I think you're in good shape. Kristen from San Diego, thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to run your new position, your new job, your new retirement plan by us, all you need to do is go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button and check the box. If you want to join us on the air, don't forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter and subscribe to the Jill on Money live service. That's where you have access to quarterly live webinars and lots of cool video content like interviews. My, you know, one of my favorite interviews that we did was earlier in the year, we did a great interview with Gina Smilek. She's like the Federal Reserve whisperer from the New York Times. It was great. You can actually see all of those videos and all those interviews that we did throughout this past year. If you subscribe for $35, again, that will give you access to quarterly live webinars and access to all the bonus content. So check it out. Mark Talercio is the co-host, executive producer, and the web king of this show and this endeavor called Jill on Money. We are distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes every Tuesday and Thursday, and we ask you to put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. Someone needs a little pat on the back from you. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.